Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, my name is Dallas Montague, calling you here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Today, we have another wonderful guest joining us, Rhonda Miller. Rhonda, how are you today? I'm doing great. It's I'm so great to have you here to join us with our audience today. I'm so glad to be here. This is wonderful to me. We have some amazing content that we're going to discuss today in your interview. Before we do, I always like to give the guests time to share a little bit about their personal testimony. Our audience really love to hear about why you are a believer, Rhonda. Okay. Um, I am a believer because um, when I was in high school, uh, up until the time that I got saved, uh, I did not know anything. I really knew very little about the Lord. And um, senior year of high school, I started uh, going to my friend's um, choir rehearsal. She was in the choir at her church, and I just started going to choir rehearsal with her. She was my really good friend. And so as I was going to the choir rehearsal and listening to them sing the songs about the Lord, I told her one day that I want to be one of God's people. And so she said to me, you want to be saved. And I said, well, what is that? You know, and she explained to me about Jesus. Um, she explained to me about God. Um, she explained, explained to me about giving my life to God. And she told me to go home and, and find, and find in my Bible, Romans 8 and 28. Well, the Bible that we had at home, um, was a big giant, I don't know if you've ever seen the big giant Catholic Bible from long ago. I don't know if they do that anymore, but it, it's huge. And so I found that scripture um, that said, if we believe in our hearts and then confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved. So I did just that. And, um, and that's how um, I became saved. And, uh, and one of God's people is what I, is, like I said Amazing. to her. <laughs> how do you think that changed your life moving forward after making that decision? Um, it changed my life in, um, in uh, a good way, of course, it changed my life in a good way uh, in that I was much more aware of the Lord and um, I was much more aware, but didn't have a lot of teaching. So um, I did uh, a lot of reading on my own, which was good in some sense, but I did really need to be taught. Uh, the word of God in a way that I could I could understand it and make it applicable to my life. So my awareness of him uh, did increase. And as I grew older, I started to study the word and it became really important to me, not just to study it and to know what it said, but to apply it to my life in various situations. And that's um, kind of how I came to forgiveness. Uh, as well, because I needed to study it because I really didn't understand it from what I had heard from various people. Mm -hmm. And that takes us into your book, A yes. Guide to Forgiveness. And we were talking a little bit before we started recording that forgiveness is so important. Mm -hmm. And in my life, mm -hmm. it's been so important. The things that I have done, the things that people have done to me, we yes. need to live in forgiveness. Yes. You don't know this about me, Rhonda, but our audience do that I had a drug addiction about five or six years ago. And I was at a place called Rock Bottom. I hurt mm -hmm. my friends, my family, a lot mm -hmm. of things, a lot of pain. And there was a lot of forgiveness that needed mm -hmm. to happen. And so I'm excited to hear your perspective of forgiveness, your testimony, and what you can give our audience today. Yeah. So you're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. 
If you tried to become an author and you figured out how to get started but your process was stalled, or selling books seems overwhelming, it's not your fault. The unusual way does not work for most folks, and that's why so many books end up in the graveyard. It's time to consider the unusual approach. The robot book method has everything you need to publish and distribute your first book. Find more information at robotthebook.com or by searching outlineyournextbookchallenge.com. Do you believe in the rapture? Do you believe that the events that are taking place in the earth today indicate that Jesus is returning soon? Would you be open to directing your assets so that after the rapture they would be repurposed to help your loved ones and friends who are left behind? The Golden Rule Law Group Completely Free Rapture Plan begins with the proposition that there will be a lot of people who miss out on the rapture. Find your free copy of the rapture plan by searching DeckerAndWoods.com. That is D-E-C-K-E-R-A-N-D-Woods.com. What led you to write this book, A Guide to Forgiveness? Okay. Um, what led me to write it was when I started studying forgiveness because I, I didn't understand it. Um, and the reason that I, I needed forgiveness was because um, I had been sexually abused as a, as a little girl. And um, I had heard the, these phrases um, about forgiveness. You, need, you just need to let go. Um, you need to give it over, you know, you need to move on. And, um, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand it and it didn't make sense to me. Uh, and so I started to, and I had, uh, that was when I was 11, when I was abused. And as I, after I got saved and after actually years after I got saved, I started to study forgiveness because I heard these various phrases, but not much else than that. So I started to study it to understand what it meant. Um, so as I studied it, um, I began to understand what it means and, and what to do when you say, I forgive you. So um, years after that, um, I was in contact with a lot of people, you know, uh, friends and family. And when that subject came up, it was, you know, clear to me that people did not have a biblical understanding of yeah. forgiveness. People have, and then that was another thing too. I did a lot of reading and uh, I found that people had their own definition of forgiveness, but not the Bible definition of forgiveness. And the Bible definition of forgiveness was freedom and clarity and the ability to actually, you gain the ability uh, and the power to move on with your life. And so, um, so that's how I how I um, decided to to write the book, which is actually a guide, and it and I uh, have picked out various characters in the Bible, and um, and have a guide uh, in the book as well as to this is what we need to do when we say we forgive. Mm -hmm. Whenever you were seeking for forgiveness in the Bible. Were you seeking just to have a revelation or are you seeking for personal healing? Where was your, your mindset in that time? I was seeking um, information. Yes, revelation, insight, and healing as well. Because I had heard, you know, from various people, pastors and teachers, I heard about forgiveness, but I, I just didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I just did not get it for myself. And that's why I started studying. So the... I knew that I needed to do it, and I knew that I needed healing from the pain that I had experienced from the abuse. Yeah, I think it's amazing how insight and revelation leads to healing. Mm -hmm. I think it's it a powerful thing for our audience yes. to understand yes. is when you seek God, when you seek his revelation, his understanding, healing mm -hmm. comes after that. Exactly. Healing comes through it. So, wow, exactly. amazing. And mm -hmm. what else can you say? Why did you feel the need so heavy to write this book? To, to take this and give it to other people. Okay. Uh, well, I make this, this statement um, in the introduction that I actually wrote the book for me and I'm just sharing it with you uh, mm -hmm. because everything that I, everything that's in the book is what I study. And so it was for me and um, for me to gain understanding, to get healing, to get clarity. And so I, I'm sharing it. So I'm, that's, that's really what the book is. Mm -hmm just sharing with others my 
my uh, understanding and what I learned about forgiveness. Yeah. So that's really what it was. Mm. I didn't really, you know, uh, when I started studying forgiveness, I didn't start out to write a book. It was all for me. And so I'm just sharing. (laughs) Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing this. (laughs) We need it. We need it. What would you say is the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to forgiveness? And a secondary question with that is, I think that there's phrases that we say that aren't in the Bible, but we live by them and we say, this is biblical, but it's not. So what are some of those things? Okay. um, Well, um, one is about, it's it's about, um, I don't deserve forgiveness, so I I can't have it. So people um, talk like that, that even if, not just from God, but from other people, I don't deserve to be forgiven. And so I can't be forgiven. And so that, that is not, not true. Uh, the part that is, what is true is that we don't deserve to be forgiven. It's not about what we deserve. Mm-hmm. God loves us like that. He just loves us like that. You know, that um, he forgives us. So when whatever sin it is, whether it's lying or cheating or murder or rape, or abuse, or whatever it is, when we come to God and ask him to forgive us, he forgives us. And and being deserving of that forgiveness is not an issue. That's why Jesus came, you know, um, so that we, he, he took our place um, with the deserving part. So he took that on himself. So now we are free to come to God and say, please forgive me. I lied, I stole, I cheated, whatever it is. And he does just that. And um, whether or not we deserve it, he does. What could you, what could you add about the shame and guilt that we have? Mm -hmm. Because that also plays into, I don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. It does. It really does. And so that, that comes along with learning, with us uh, educating ourselves and learning about who God is and how he is. There's scripture that says that there is no shame. There is no condemnation for those of Mm -hmm. us who are in Christ Jesus. There's no shame for us. The thing about that is, and I said that very easily, but it, we, once we start to learn about the nature of God and how he, and how much he loves us, we, we can't fathom. I, I know he loves me, but I also know that I don't understand the depth of the love that he has for me, except when I see Jesus, that he sent his son, that Jesus represents his love for us. That's what, So we have to learn that and accept that, that he loves us so much that he sent his son to come get us out of shame and condemnation and unforgiveness so that we could be in right standing with him. And yeah, so when we learn it and accept it, you know, and and it is amazing. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't even make sense to the (laughs) to our natural minds that somebody would love me like that. But and it's you know, like with your baby, you know, you love you love your baby, uh, Mm -hmm. boy or girl, a boy. Okay, you love your baby if uh, if he if he um, makes a mess if he uh, you know makes a mess in his pamper. Mm-hmm. That does not stop you from loving him. You know, you don't say, you know, how dare you, you just messed up another pamper. This is ridiculous. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. when are you going to stop doing this? You don't do that. You just love him and you lovingly take care of him. That's how God is with us. He just wants us to come to him. He knows our humanity. He recognizes our humanity, you know, way back from the beginning with Adam and Eve. He created us human and he, he made provision for us to be forgiven with Jesus. So he's not surprised. He, he knows his children. He mm-hmm. knows his creation. And he says, this is what I have set aside for you. That's amazing. When you say it like that, it makes it so personal. And you're like, wow, mm-hmm. he does get me. He does understand that I'm a human and that I feel yes. that yes. I want to be right. And yes, that's so yes. Good. So good, and he has so many examples in Mm -hmm. you know so many people in the Bible that failed and got up and got it together, you know, and and it's okay, yeah. Amazing, amazing. 
What could you say? What else is another mistake that people could make? Something else um, more about people is that we think that um, when we forgive someone, that it means that we don't hurt about mm-hmm. their the the thing that they did against us. Yeah, I've heard it also said like this that we're saying that it's okay what they did. Right. That's not true either. So yeah, no. continue. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um so if when someone has hurt me, um and and you know, um uh, like I was sharing with the about my testimony about being sexually abused, um, when I forgave that person, I still hurt mm-hmm. about what was done to me. But it did not take away Mm -hmm. my forgiveness because forgiveness is a decision that we make. It's not a feeling. It's a decision. So I decided to forgive him. And when I decided to forgive him, the hurt that I have, I took that to God because the person that hurt me could not heal me. He couldn't. It just, you know, um, so I had to go to the Lord. I had to um, use uh, the scriptures. I had to go to counseling. I did all of that. That's where, and because it was so much that happened in that abuse, um, as far as how I saw myself as a person, not important. I have no value. I'm by myself. I'm not in control. I can't do anything. So all of those things, God made provision for, you know, and he tells me in his word that I do matter. That did happen to you. You still matter. Uh, he did not. He did not think that you matter, but you do to me. You know. So, um, so he, you can forgive someone and still feel the hurt and the pain of what they did. That does not mean that you don't forgive. It means that I'm still hurting. Yeah. There's a that made me think of another question that's so okay. difficult to answer. Okay. Another difficult question is. How could God let something like this happen? Yes. How could you answer that question for our audience today? Yes. Okay. Um, That is that is a deep uh, a deep rooted question. Um, How could how can um, God let that happen? The Bible says that um, all things work together for our good to them that love the Lord and who are called according to His purpose. So God will take the messy, the nasty, the awful, and he is the one that is able to turn it Mm -hmm. around for our benefit, just like he did with Jesus. He sent Jesus, his son, to die for us, and Jesus died a painful death. That was, I mean, and I'm saying the word painful, but it was gruesome. It was terrible. It was physically painful for Jesus to go through that. However, he didn't stay there. He rose again. He rose. He came back to life. And so God took what he allowed him to go through for us. And he turned it around for our benefit as well. So Jesus lives now and his death um, and his burial and his resurrection, all of that was for, was for us. So God is able to take something that is good and ugly and nasty and filthy and and turn it around for our good. So as for me, um, I'm a counselor and uh, many of my clients are people that have been sexually abused. They, they've experienced trauma. And so not only do I know from the perspective of God's word that healing can happen, I know myself because I've experienced it. Uh, and and not only me, but there are so many other so many other people that have the same testimony, whether you know of some kind of trauma or some kind of bad situation, and God amazingly turned it around, and now people are helping other people come out of what they were in as well. Mm-hmm. So God is God is able to do that. The the person in the Bible that first comes to mind is Joseph. Joseph. Um, uh, in the Bible, he, he, um, long story short, he told his brothers that he was going to be ruler over them. And they got mad, they got jealous, and they uh, sold him. Uh, first, they put him in a pit, let him stay there. And then they pulled the came back and got him, pulled him out, and then uh, sold him uh, as a slave. Mm-hmm. 
And so from there, Joseph experienced so many horrible, horrible experiences. Someone, uh, someone accused him of rape. You know, it was, it was really bad for years, 17 years, Joseph went through that. And um, he got to the point where he became the ruler of Egypt. He became a ruler and his family needed him. And they came to him and Joseph recognized who they were after 17 years. And he heard, the Bible says that when he recognized who they were, that he went into another room and he cried out. He, he cried out uh, from the memory, the pain of what they had done to him. And he did, so he was hurting and he did that and he helped them because they were, they were in a famine. The country at that time was in a famine. And uh, they, you know, food was scarce. So he is the ruler and he helps them get uh, with food and, and substance what they needed. So he's one, one of many examples in the Bible of people that were, that were hurt um, and forgave. Uh, and he told them, he said, what you did was meant, what you did was meant to hurt me, but God allowed it for not only my good, but for the good of many. Mm -hmm. And God always does that, always does that. And there's one more example that I'll share about someone who did not experience uh, the benefit of forgiveness. Um, her, uh, uh, her name is Tamar. And Tamar was, was raped by her half-brother. And um, so she told her full brother, Absalom, and Absalom said, you can go and live, you know, you can come live with me. And so um, she did. And uh, it was very awful because uh, at that, she was about 14 years old. And at, and in that time, uh, girls that were virgin, they wore a certain attire. And so she wore her attire and she was really happy about that. And so after her half brother raped her, she tore it off of her. And the Bible says she did go to live with her brother, um, Absalom, and she lived the rest of her life as a desolate woman. She never healed. She never forgave. Her life ended at 14 and she just stayed in his house. And, and the Bible doesn't speak any more about her other than that. So when we don't forgive, when we don't get healing, when we don't address our pains, we live desolate. We can we have the the, the possibility of living a desolate life, you know. I think that's a gr those are both great examples of forgiveness, and I think that's the only way to answer that question: Why did God let this happen to me? Is through that example of Joseph. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Yes. And the yes. second, wow. Powerful stories of the Bible. And yes. like you said, those are just two of many. Yes, exactly. Exactly. What would you say are three key ingredients to our forgiveness? Okay. Um, three key in ingredients. Um, one is to make the decision to forgive. Um, just to decide this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to forgive this person. Another is to acknowledge the pain, the agony, acknowledge the offense that the person did against you. So um, we have to do that uh, in order to move on. So once we, we acknowledge that he hurt me, she hurt me, she offended me, whatever, whatever the offense was, uh, and then make the decision um, to forgive that person. And, and then we need to understand that God will restore to us what that person took or what the, the, the problem was, what the outcome was because they offended you. You know, um, and many times people will say, you know, okay, I'm sorry if I, if I owe you money, I'll pay you back your $50, your $1,000 or whatever. And, but many times people don't do anything. You know, and so the Bible says that God will restore what the enemy stole. He, so when we forgive, when we acknowledge that we were hurt, we acknowledge that someone offended us, 
and we make the decision and accept that God is the one. I'm looking to God to restore, not you. I'm looking to God to restore me. I'm looking to God to give me um, what you owe me. That's how good God is. So those, those are three ingredients that I think we need to do. Hey. I think that's, the, that's a big overall statement is that God will restore. Yes. He's in the yes. business of restoration. Come on. Oh, <laughs> yes. We need restoration. Yes, <laughs> we, we need do. It. Yes, we do. If you could leave our audience with one overall thought today, Rhonda, what do you think that would be? Okay. Um, the overall thought would be that um, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. And I say that because forgiveness can seem like it's so ominous, like it's, mm. I can't do it. It's, it, and it actually, it is too hard for us by ourselves. But when we turn that over to the Lord and say, God, I need help. I cannot do this by myself. You told me in your word that I have to forgive him. I need to forgive him. I can't do it. Please help me. He will. He will help us. He is a present help in the time of trouble. Present. And yes, present. right now. He's a right now God. And so if we need that help right now, he will, he will do it. And then there's a, this uh, Proverbs 3 and 6 says that when we acknowledge him and we say, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't even want to do it. I'm just doing it because you said I have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's, the scripture says when we acknowledge him, that he will show us what to do. And then once we do what he says do, he will crown our efforts with success. I, love I like that. <laughs> I love that. I'm rebuking that in my house today because my wife, newborn baby, I can't do this. Like, right. yes, you can. God is helping us. Come on, we can do it. Yes. So I was rebuking that today in my house. Okay. That there God go. is good enough. He can do it. He can do it. He so. can do it. He can Rhonda, thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed your interview today. And where can we find this guide to forgiveness? And also if you have a website or social media where we can find those yes. as well. Okay. So, um, so I, um, I have a Facebook page, um, books and more is the name of the page and the, and the book is there and it has the information, uh, on Amazon as well. The book is also on Amazon. And so uh, the name of the book is A Guide to Forgiveness and um, why God started it, how to do it, um, and what it means. So um, if you go to Amazon, it's there. Or um, my Facebook, um, I have a page called Books and More. And you can, you know, look at the information, how to order it there. And there are some great um, posts on there as well. Excellent. I'm also going to put that link below for you guys to check that out. Below okay. the podcast, you can click on her links and find her Facebook page, find the book on Amazon and okay. all of that as well. Rhonda, again, it's been wonderful to have you here today as our guest. Can I have you end our time together with a prayer? Yes. Thank you. Be glad to. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your precious son, Jesus Christ, who died and was raised up so that we could have eternal life. We thank you, God, for this podcast. We thank you for Dallas. We thank you for the word that went out to so many people today about forgiveness. I thank you, God, that people are forgiving right now. They're in, they're, they have clarity and they have understanding. And so I lift them up, God, even uh, to ask you to just be with them as they make this decision to forgive and so that they can truly move on with their lives in freedom and in healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast with your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.